but maybe consider, would you like to be an American? Okay, here's a little quick one I'm going to end with you. Just because you think doing war may be hard and stuff, it's like simple card tricks. Here's a little bit of simple card tricks. Gee, how can we get the people to go to war? Why do people go to war? Why do they go to war? Renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin. It was on that date in the Gulf of Tonkin off the coast of North Vietnam that the American war in Vietnam really began. If you went to war again, who would it be against? Huh? Your ability to fight a two ocean war against who? Who? Sweden and Togo? Now, Saddam Hussein was given one last chance. George, the first George W. Bush, did an excellent job when it came to the Gulf War. I ordered our forces to launch a cruise missile attack on the Iraqi intelligence service's principal command and control facility in Baghdad. The war of the future is nuclear terrorism. It is, and it'll be against a small group of dissidents who, unbeknownst perhaps to their own governments, have blah, 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 blah. Terrorists, 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 terrorists. We are under threat now. Some may say, well, he's just saying that to, uh, you know, get people to pay attention to him or try to scare him into, for some reason, I, I you know, I, <laughs> they are a threat to your children, David. We just found out they have the bomb. That's good. Nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons programs. The deadliest of weapons. Terrible weapons. Nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. I will promise you this, that if we have not gotten our troops out by the time I am president, it is the first thing I will do. I will get our troops home. We will bring an end to this war. You can take that to the bank. When I promise that I, we are going to bring this war in Iraq to a close in 2009, I want the American people to understand that I opposed this war in 2002, 2003, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So you can have confidence that I will be serious about ending this war. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. <laughs> you think I'm joking? At least four people have been killed in yet another U.S. drone attack in northwestern Pakistan. Now, some of these strikes are killing civilians. Uh, there's been a very important new study by Peter Bergen at the New America Foundation that suggests that about 30 percent of the, the people that are killed are civilians, which is always very unfortunate. It was very careful never to say that Saddam Hussein ordered the attacks on America. Before September the 11th, many in the world believed that Saddam Hussein could be contained. So it's a suitcase bomb. I said that. <laughs> it's a suitcase bomb. You don't need missiles. You can put a bomb on a suitcase, right? It's a suitcase bomb. Yeah, suitcase that's good. That's good. The juiciest target in the world for non-state actors who would like to have nu suitcase nuclear bombs. And will the Iranians sell it to them? Will they give it to them? Can it be stolen? Can some corrupt person in a supply chain give it to some other group? I mean, think about it. Iran, Cuba, Venezuela, these countries are tiny compared to the Soviet Union. They don't pose a serious threat to us. I disagree. We all know that Iran poses a threat. We do need to mount international pressure to stop Iran's nuclear program. What do we have today? want? A little freedom? Well, why would they want that? Now is the time to end the war in Iraq. Let there be no doubt, I will end this war. So now you get an idea how you can go to war and how you can have a politician say, I'm going to end the war, but he doesn't. You know, he adds more troops. All the lies funded by the same globalist banksters. So when you think of Goldman Sachs being the greatest contributor to, you know, Barry Satoro, the guy we know as Hussein Obama, okay, think, gee, I don't want to forget about J.P. Morgan, hundreds of trillions of dollars in derivatives. How did they take your economy down? How is it that they sold, that they created, what, mortgage-backed securities while short-selling them on the side? What do you want for your children? What do you want for your wife? You know, do you want opportunities when your children get out of college? Do you want the opportunity for your children to go to college? So, as you prepare for this fun economic game that's coming, and it won't be fun, remember that you watch the real story, and I asked you to, would you please think for yourself? Would you please follow the money? 
would you please start standing up and getting testosterone men? And by the way, while watching the end credits, watch Building 7. The third building to collapse at 5.20 in the afternoon on September 11th. Rather funny, how did the BBC report it collapsed 20 minutes before that? Were they reading scripts? Can you do that? Could it have been an inside job? Would it be the first time? Why don't you, homework, look up the Gulf of Tonkin. There you go, that's how they started the Vietnam War. Was that an inside job? The ships weren't even torpedoed. Don't believe me. Do your own due diligence. Do your own research. Thanks for watching the show. And uh, just so I don't, uh, I don't leave you out, I'll do a little bit of overdrive. And this is Gary Franchi. This is Gary Franchi telling you about a new legislation, the Disclose Act, where from 60 days before an election to now 120, we're not going to allow the people to know what people voted on. It's Incumbency Protection Act is what they ought to name it. So many of these new laws, when I say new laws, the legislation passed recently, like the Telecommunications Act, as far back as, you know, the 90s, this is all to control the populace. Do you see the police state growing? Anyway, here you go. This is the Disclose Act. This is why you should get off your butt. Call that guy Brown that they hired. Remember, Brown wasn't going to go for, you know, socialized medicine. Brown wasn't going to go for the banker bill of financial reform thing. Love the name, financial reform. How about financial takeover thing? So, I'm pretty windy. I try to get you as much as I can in a short time. Thanks for watching The Real Story. Don't forget The Real Story late night movie on Friday evenings. And God bless you. God bless this republic. And down with the New World Order. A new bill is about to change the face of politics forever. Unless you act now. The democracy is strengthened by casting light on Spending and Elections Act, or the Disclose Act, should be renamed this stifling grassroots political support and removing political privacy bill. This act affects all people and organizations. The bill, sponsored by Maryland Representative Chris Van Hollen, has moved out of committee and currently has 114 co-sponsors. It is on its way to the House floor for a vote. H.R. 5175 is written to ensure freedom groups cannot rally their members in the upcoming elections by placing erroneous reporting mandates on them and by forcing them to disclose their membership rosters and donor lists. These mandates apply to individuals and groups which make independent donations or promote their favored candidate outside the realm of official campaigns, namely grassroots activism. H.R. 5175 amends the Federal Election Campaign Act of 1971. Title I, Section 103 of the bill defines contribution as any payment by any person except a candidate, a candidate's authorized committee, or a political committee of a political party for a coordinated communication. What are coordinated communications? Section 103 clarifies a publicly distributed or disseminated communication referring to a clearly identified candidate for federal office which is made during a specified election period in cooperation, consultation, or concert with, or at the request or suggestion of a candidate, a candidate's authorized committee, or a political committee of a political party, any communication that republishes, disseminates, or distributes in whole or in part any broadcast or any written graphic or other form of campaign material prepared by a candidate, a candidate's authorized committee, or their agents. So Title I changes the terms of a contribution to mean a donation by the average American or political grassroots supporter to an unaffiliated organization who intends to act on merely a suggestion of a candidate or one who should decide to retransmit the information of a political campaign. Title II, Subtitle A, Section 201, revises the definition of independent expenditure in the Federal Election Campaign Act of 1971 to mean an expenditure that when taken as a whole expressly advocates the election or defeat of a clearly identified candidate or is the functional equivalent of express advocacy. It also requires any person making independent expenditures exceeding $10,000 must file a report electronically within 24 hours if you make an independent expenditure over $1,000 you have less than 20 days before the election. Meaning if you or your organization pay for a billboard, take out an ad, or promote your own online web campaign for or against a candidate 
that exceeds $10,000 or $1,000 20 days before a campaign, you will have to file a report with the FEC within 24 hours. Title III, Section 301 requires organizations to disclose to, disclose to shareholders, members, or donors information on disbursements for campaign-related activity. It also requires organizations that maintain an internet site to post a hyperlink from its homepage to the location on the FEC website containing information required to be reported with respect to public independent expenditures, including disbursements for electioneering communications. What this means is that the government wants to create a list of all people who donate to all organizations who support political campaigns so they can post it on the FEC website. Then the organization has to link to the respective information on the FEC website from their own site. This will be an excellent way to build a list and keep track of political opponents for future targeting and harassment. H.R. 5175 only creates one more list alongside the other lists the government keeps, like the terrorist watch list and the no-fly list. So what do we need to do? It's time to rally the troops and take action. Please urge your congressman to vote against H.R. 5175. This bill has moved out of committee and has now been placed on the House calendar, so you must act fast. Please visit contacting the Congress. Century. It is not the elite cockroaches that determine that. It is you.